Yep. Hi everyone, I'm Kylie from AACC Global. Today I'll be the host um, for this session. So today we'll be having our last session for our health science talk. Um, those who just uh, come in, welcome. Okay, so if let's say you are interested on the previous topics like pharmacy or veterinary science or you're interested into speech pathology, chiropractic, um, you may look into our AACC YouTube channel. So we have our recorded session over there. And also don't forget to subscribe to our AACC Facebook, Instagram, YouTube channel to have more information and also our upcoming events. Okay, so um, for all the attendees, should you have any questions, um, feel free to type out your questions in the Q&A box at the bottom bottom of this um, webinar or the Zoom platform, you will see a Q&A box. So you can type out your questions over there. So uh, once you type it out, could you indicate you are asking um, specifically for medicine or dentistry or both so that um, we could address the, uh, the questions accordingly? Okay, um, I have, yeah, so now it's 8.01. Probably we wait for another couple of minutes, one or two minutes for more um, students join in so that they don't miss out much. Okay, so hi everyone. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Mm, today is our last session for our health science talk. So if you have any question, please remember to um, um, type it in the Q&A session. Okay, so maybe we wait for another one minute, then we will start this session. Yeah. Okay, um, without further ado, today we have um, Jervain from University of Western Australia. He'll be talking about the medicine course and also um, we have Stephanie with us from University of Adelaide so she will be talking about dentistry all right so let's begin now uh, Jovin can you please give us an introduction about yourself and also the medicine course at University of Western Australia sure thanks Kylie and hello everyone uh, my name is Jovain and I'm the senior regional manager for Singapore and Malaysia here at UWA thanks so much for your interest and of course for joining us this evening. Well, as an introduction, the medicine program at UWA is a clinical and accredited course. We aim to produce graduates committed to the well-being um, of patients in the community as responsible, capable, ethical, and caring doctors. So this course prepares graduates with the clinical and professional attributes required to practice as a doctor. We have two pathways available for our international students depending on their education background. So the first pathway is called the Assured Pathway, and this is for students who are completing or have completed their high school, such as A-levels, IB, OSMAT, Foundation Studies, uh, or equivalent qualifications. So the Assured Pathway is a six-year true train program that comprises of a Bachelor of Biomedical Science in the first three years, followed by the Postgraduate Doctor of Medicine in the final three years. The other pathway available is called the Graduate Entry, and as the name implies, this is for students um, who are completing or have completed a bachelor degree and are applying for the postgraduate doctor of medicine. Now, in the graduate pathway, students study the doctor of medicine for four years. Thanks, Kai. Yeah, that's great to know. Um, Stephanie, can you please give us an introduction about yourself and also the course um, dentistry program at University of Adelaide? Sure, thank you, Tylee. So, hi everyone, I'm Stephanie. I'm the representative for University of Adelaide. Um, I, I'm representing for, um, I'm covering for Malaysia and Singapore as well, same as Jervais. So, for the Bachelor of Dentary Surgery program at the University of Adelaide, it's the only professional dental degree in South Australia. And this dentistry um, at the University of Adelaide is a five year undergrad degree program. And when the student complete the training, they will be a qualified dentist in Australia. Students are also involved in clinical procedure from the outset of the degree, emphasizing the recognition and also prevention of oral disease. That's great to know, Stephanie. Um, we will be having a poll on the screen right now. Could you please indicate which course that you are interested, either uh, medicine, dentistry, or you are not sure, or you can just let us know, okay, so that we roughly know uh, what is your interest, so that later on when uh, you have more info, you want more information from us, we can let you know. Okay, so click on the poll um, throughout the, uh, the session, okay. Um, Javain, I would like to ask, um, why should international students like Malaysian or Singaporean study medicine at University of Western Australia? 
Yes, thank you. That's a really good question, Kylie. Um, there are many reasons why students choose to study medicine at UWA. Now, firstly, UWA has a prestigious medical school with more than 60 years of teaching excellence. And our clinical medicine program is highly regarded in Australia and also in the world. We are ranked 29th in the world for clinical medicine, and the school is led by world-class academic staff, including a Nobel Prize winner. So to share with you, uh, Professor Barry Marshall was a former UW student who graduated in medicine, and he went out to the world and he made a big difference. In the past, it was believed that stress was causing stomach ulcer. However, Pro Professor Barry Marshall believed otherwise uh, and discovered that it was actually this bacteria called Helicobacter pylori that was causing gastritis and peptic ulcer disease. Professor Barry Marshall's discovery and cure has saved over a million lives in the last two decades. So he's truly one of the many remarkable academic staff at the University of Western Australia. Beyond the prestige, the rankings and the world-class academic staff, we also have uh, state-of-the-art facilities in the UWA Health Campus, which I'll share more about it later on. Thank you, Doreen. Um, Stephanie, could you please uh, share with us why should international students study dentistry at University of Adelaide? Sure, thank you, Kylie. So for Adelaide Dental School, have been named the top Australia dental school in Australia. And also it's one of the Australia dental school that rank in the top 50 in the world. So Adelaide Dental School reputation for outstanding teaching, research, contribution to the community, and also the quality of the graduates has been built over a proud of 100 years history. So with this, we offer the student a comprehensive range of accredited, clinically focused undergrad and also postgrad dentistry um, and also oral health degree. Yeah, that's from me. Thanks, Kelly. Thank you. Okay, as an international student, I think they will have a lot of questions about the course. Um, probably, Jervain, could you share with us what would the students be learning, for example, the course structure um, and also what are the like um, criteria and so on? Sure. Um, so in the Assured Pathway, students undertake the Bachelor of Biomedical Science in the first three years and they take a specialized major called the Integrated Medical Sciences and Clinical Practice major. Um, and this really covers a wide range of bioscience topics, including anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, microbiology, pharmacology, and et cetera. While the predominant content is really academic and scientific knowledge, there will also be some preliminary uh, learning of research and evidence-based practice. Practical and clinical components will commence from the third year of the bachelor degree. And we also bring in real life patients in the classroom to complement our teaching. Um, once students progress into the postgraduate course, which is from the fourth year onwards, students start to spend about 40 to 60 hours each week on clinical skills and attachments at hospital wards, clinics, uh, general practices, and even community settings. This experience is repeated in the fifth year, and there will also be an opportunity for students to do their own medical research and graduate not only with the Doctor of Medicine qualification, but also some medical literature publications. In the final year of the program, there will be more in-depth study in areas of interest, and after completing their final round of clinical attachments, uh, they will prepare, uh, um, begin a preparation for an internship unit which really helps them to transition into a pre-registration intern uh, at a hospital. Yeah, Stephanie, could you share with us um, the cost structure and also uh, what would students be learning for the dentistry program? Yes. Um, so the Bachelor of Dental Surgery consists of integrate course in each year level with clinic, uh, clinical experience being provided from day one. So our students are very fortunate to have a very broad range of clinical learning experience beginning from the early in first year as skill knowledge and the ability to provide safe and effective care to the patient built throughout the program. Students also move into the same dental uh, service clinics that we have in the third year providing care to the patients in the state of the art um, Adelaide Health and Medical Science Building in the later years of the program. Students will also have the opportunity to continue their clinical experience in community clinics within Adelaide. So this will actually include playing a key role in community outreach program led by the University of Adelaide, such as a common ground clinic, which provide care for the pe uh, people who are homeless and also vulnerable in our community. So in year one um, and year two, year three, year four, and year five, all the programs, students will start with a small group to discover the experience, focus on the initial place of patient care, 
And then also in year five, they will be starting more on uh, clinical skills in range of clinical placement. Yeah, it is great to hear that um, students will have clinical placement at both um, for both courses and also at both universities. Uh, Jabin, would you be able to share where will students be having their clinical placements at? Yes, definitely. Um, so our students undertake clinical placements in a range of private and public hospitals. There are rotation opportunities in general practice, surgery, emergency medicine, uh, cancer, psychiatry, just to name a few. So these are just uh, a few examples of where our students actually do their rotations. Students also have the opportunities to do placements in metro or rural areas. Uh, so definitely there, there are a wide range of places where students can do their clinical placements. Stephanie, how about University of Adelaide? Uh, where will students be having their clinical placements at? So for our dental student, from first year, students will undertake compulsory clinical placement in a range of settings, including city-based dental hospitals and community dental clinic located in metropolitan Adelaide, rural South Australia, and also interstate. So um, throughout the program, the uh, student will also have the opportunity to actually uh, travel to Vietnam to do a clinical placement in Vietnam as well. Oh, that's great to know, Stephanie. Yeah, Javine, could you share with us the facilities or support that UWA offers that are able to help students to gain more in their study journey? Sure, Kylie. Um, as medical students, you would need um, good facilities to effectively train you as doctors. Our UWA medical students are taught at the mm -hmm. state of the art UWA Health Campus and Queen Elizabeth II Medical Center, which is just a 10 minutes uh, walking distance from the main UWA campus. The UWA Health Campus is made up of the Queen Elizabeth II Medical Center, the Perth Children's Hospital, the Perkins Institute of Medical Research, and the State Pathology Lab, just to name a few. If you come to UWA to study medicine, you can expect to work alongside industry professionals in the health campus and gain real-world uh, real experience before you graduate. In addition, we also embed technology into our learning at the biomedical sciences teaching laboratories and our e-learning suites and that gives students practical diagnostic uh, experience and an environment that mimics the consultative nature of a working lab. Hmm. Stephanie, could you also share with us about the facilities or support that University of Adelaide offers for their international students? So as our dentist, uh, dentistry or oral health student, the student will have the opportunity to, to perfect their skill in the clinical environment using the latest stimulation technology in the Adelaide Dental Stimulation Clinic. So we will have 90 individuals stimulators available, each equipped with their own mannequins, dental equipment, PC, and also monitor. So our dentists, uh, our dental students actually spend more than 550 hours in the stimulation clinic as part of their curriculum. Yeah, um, probably I think this session will be the much more uh, students will be interested. So um, may I know um, about the, because we know that medicine and dentistry course that is limited seats. So um, for Jovain, could you please tell us more about the entry requirement and application process to apply for uh, medicine course at UWA? Yeah, sure. Um, so I'll just probably start off covering um, the number of places available for international students every year. So mm -hmm. year we have um, 30 places available for international students, of which 20 places are for the assured pathway and 10 places are for the graduate entry. While places are limited, uh, students benefit from, from being part of a small cohort and therefore they receive plenty of one-to-one -one time and attention from their professors. Um, to address uh, the questions about admission requirements, I think it's yeah. probably better if I just share my screen. Um, yes. so it's easier to, um, for our students to take note of. Yep. Can you see the screen clearly? Yes, I can. Okay, great. So what I'll do is I'll just start off by um, showing our audience the state-of-the-art facilities that we've got that I've mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is the UWA Health Campus. So as I've mentioned, it is, it is made up of several medical institutes within this whole compound itself. And it's only a 10 minutes walking distance from the U main UWA campus. So everything that a student requires in terms of their clinical practice, in terms of their academic studies, is all within that, that entire vicinity. Uh, like I mentioned, these are the um, institutions that are part of that medical precinct. 
Uh, this is a, a few images of UWA facilities, including our laboratories, our biomedical sciences e-learning suites, where, uh, as I've mentioned, we really embed technology into our teaching. So um, students benefit from the, from the usage of uh, technology in complementing their medical uh, lessons. And you can't be a doctor without learning uh, about surgery. So uh, we've also got surgical training facilities available at UWA. Um, and moving on to the pathways to medicine. So as I've mentioned, uh, we've got two um, different pathways, the assured pathway and the graduate entry. So just as a recap, mm -hmm. and to give students a visual guide, like I mentioned, the assured pathway is a six years program, which is a true train program as well. So this is really for school leavers uh, that have studied A-levels, IB, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Graduate entry is um, for students who have a bachelor degree or are completing a bachelor degree, and it's a straight four years postgraduate course. In terms of admission requirements, um, I'll, I'll go through each component in a bit, but um, just as a general guide, there are three main things that we look out for when it comes to admission into our medical course. So for the assured pathway, we're looking at academic results as the first uh, criteria. The second will be a valid ISAT test score and the third being a face-to-face -face panel interview. Uh, so going back to the academic performance, it really depends on what qualification a student has. Uh, so if you study the Singapore A-levels, we will look at your best uh, 3H2 plus 1H1 uh, or all 4H2 subjects. Uh, please note that we do not take general paper or project work into the calculation of aggregate. Um, for the UK A-levels, we take the best three advanced level subjects um, into the calculation of aggregate. Uh, the IB diploma is very straightforward. The CBSE will take the best four subjects. And for our students from NUS high school diploma, we will look at their cumulative GPA of years five and six. For our students um, in Malaysia, if they're taking the OSMED, uh, it requires an ATAR of 96. Uh, and if a student were to come to UWA College Foundation or Canning College Foundation, we require a score of 78. For students who are doing the STPM, we look at the best three uh, subjects. And for UEC, we also look at the best four subjects. For students who are taking the MAFI, uh, which is the Monash University Foundation program, it's the best eight pass uh, units divided by two for the final score. Now, in certain cases, uh, students may not have their final results um, ready uh, in time for application, and that is fine. So we can accept predicted results. Uh, but of course, the final course offers are conditional upon actual results being consistent with the predicted scores. Moving on to the ISAT component, uh, it must be submitted before 31st May this year, or if next year, it will be 31st May next year. Uh, in terms of results, we are looking for results to meet or exceed the 25th percentile. Uh, overall or in each section of the test. Finally, the uh, final component is a face-to-face -face interview that traditionally you would do it either in Singapore or in Perth. However, with this year's situation being quite a unique one where there are restrictions for traveling, uh, we will be replacing this with a CASPER test, which is a situational uh, judgment test. Students will also need to meet the uh, English language competency for both pathways. So this is for the graduate entry now, and it's for students who um, already have a bachelor degree. Now we will welcome students from a non cognate background. So that means that if you studied business or you studied in arts uh, at a bachelor degree level, please don't feel like you cannot become a doctor because we will welcome applications um, from people, uh, from students from all, all different backgrounds. Um, and polytechnic students from Singapore are welcome to uh, go through this pathway. Of course, they will have to take a bachelor degree at UWA first. So for bachelor degree holders, uh, we require an academic requirement uh, of 5.5 out of 7 as a minimum uh, academic score. Uh, and this is roughly and approximately equivalent to a GPA of 4 out of 5 for NUS and NTU in Singapore, and a GPA of 3.33 out of 4 for SNU in Singapore, and for Malaysian universities which also goes on a scale of four. Yeah. In comparison with the assured pathway, students at a graduate entry level, they do not take the ISAT. Instead, they have to take a, 
uh, GEMSAT, which is a graduate medical school admissions test, and they should achieve a minimum 50 overall with no section less than 50. Uh, alternatively, they can also provide a MCAT test, which is a medical college admission test, and the minimum that we look out for is 492 with no section less than 123. Again, there, there is typically a face-to-face um, -face panel interview, but this year we will replace with Kessler test, which uh, like I mentioned, is a situational judgment test. Students who are doing the graduate entry will also need to provide an IELTS academic test score of an overall seven with no band lesser than seven. And as a wrap up, uh, of a final slide, the key dates are as follows. Um, so the application window opens 1st of March this year and it closes on 31st May. So what this means is that by 31st May, students should have submitted a formal application with their academic results or the, and the ISAT test for the Azure pathway or the GEMSAT or NCAP for the graduate entry. Once we have that, um, we would then invite students, uh, selected students for a Kessler test in the second half of the year. And the first round of offers will start to roll out um, from late August or start of September onwards. And the course will commence in early 2022. That's all for me. Um, thanks, Kylie. Thank you, Jermaine, for your great explanation about the entry requirement. Um, for Stephanie, um, could you please elaborate more about the entry requirement and also the application process and also um, how many places are um, open for international students for dentistry? Yes, sure. Um, I guess it would be best for me to share the screen yeah. so it would be much more easier for the student to actually understand when I'm explaining. So yeah, just give me a minute. Yeah. So yeah, so this is the dentures, um, Adelaide Dental Stimulations that I actually mentioned about the facilities just now. So you can see, the student mm -hmm. can see actually there's a lot of many queens and also the student will able to actually buy those tooths in the vending machines that when they can use it at the practice. So this is part of it. Then I will go to the application process. For us, because it's the only um, undergraduate degree, it's a direct entry. So we don't have much, but we only have one way, which is the student will need to actually meet the prerequisite subject. Um, I will go into detail mm -hmm. later on on the next slide and meet the academic score and also meet the English requirement. For us, the aptitude test is UCAT ANZ. So the student will need to register with UCAT ANZ before register with University of Adelaide. Then uh, after they register with UCAT ANZ, they can actually uh, submit their application to the University of Adelaide online. Then after all the submit all uh, after complete the submissions, they will sit for the UCAT ANZ in their in the country. Um, in the UCAT center. After that, they will just wait for the um, interview uh, announcement. So normally in um, beginning of September, we will send to email to those candidates who have been selected for interview to uh, make um, arrangement for slots for interview. Then we will um, arrange the interview. And then after that, we will send out the offer to those international students who have been um, successfully selected. So yeah, from this, we can see um, our program is a five-year program and we only have a February intake. Um, we have 36 international self-paying um, quota for international students. For international students who are actually taking those year 12 um, code curriculum is 90, ATAR 90, that's the minimum requirements they need to meet. And for IB score is 33. And for those um, students in Singapore and Malaysia is doing A levels, we are actually requiring 12 points. So how we calculate this 12 point is best three subjects added up equals to 12 or above. So A equals to five, B equals to four, C equals to three. So as long as the student gain a triple B or A, B, C in their A level, including the prerequisite subjects, then they will meet our entry requirement academic score. So for the prerequisite subject, students will actually need to fulfill two subjects, one from chemistry, mathematics, or physics. The other one will be from biology, chemistry, geology, or physics. All right. So next, um, it will be the international key states that I will want to emphasize. So for us, our portal have already opened in March. So students can actually start register for year 2022 intake. And then um, just please take note, the UCAT ANZ registration closed on um, 17 of May. So without the UCAT ANZ registration, your student will not able to submit the application to the University of Adelaide. 
if you miss out the 17th of May, you have another late booking deadline, which is 31st of May. That's the last. Then after that, you can submit the application to University of Adelaide before 30th of June. Then in July to mid of August, the student will be sitting the UK ANZ test. And then 9th of September, student will get the outcome of the interview eligible. And then late of September to early of October, that is where the interview held, which is uh, will be a video conference through Zoom. Uh, Zoom. And then mid of October to beginning of February is when we will offer um, the student the offer once they have completed the interview. So I have created the, uh, we do have an admission guide, so I have created a QR code. So if the students are very interested, um, they can actually scan this QR code. It contains the um, entry requirement and also the uh, application process more on the Adelaide University Dental Surgery Program. Thank you. Thanks, Stephanie, for the explanation. Um, Jovain, is there any prerequisite subjects that students should take note? Um, besides that, if let's say students are not meeting the entry requirement, is there any bridging course or alternative ways for students to apply if they didn't meet the entry requirement? Sure, thanks Kylie. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about the prerequisite courses, uh, prerequisite subjects um, question that you've um, asked. So there are yep. some subjects that are recommended uh, subjects instead of prerequisites. We would recommend that students take or have a background in chemistry biology and physics. However, these are recommended and not compulsory. So if a student does not have a sufficient background in these areas, they may undertake bridging units as an elective or simply as part of, of their uh, bachelor degree studies. Uh, so therefore, students should prioritize uh, getting the highest marks possible in their exams rather than in particular subjects. Yeah. Moving on to um, I guess what happens if a student does not have the required grades uh, to enter our courses? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. So if a student does not meet the minimum entry requirement for the assured pathway, we would recommend that they consider taking the UWA foundation uh, from UWA College. They can then proceed to use their foundation results along with a valid ISAT test score to apply. For students who do not meet the minimum entry requirement for the graduate entry, we would recommend that they consider doing a graduate diploma or a master's at UWA to improve their academic results before applying to the UWA Doctor of Medicine. Yeah, for Stephanie, just now you have covered the prerequisite subjects, so I think students are pretty clear what subjects they should take note. Um, if let's say students are not meeting the entry requirement, is there um, bridging course or alternative pathway that students can um, go for? Um, yes, we do have a college, so as University of Adelaide College. Um, let me show my slide as well. It will be much easier yep. for me to actually explain from the slides. Just one second, yeah? Yep. So, yeah, the University of Adelaide College is actually our preferred pathway. So, they actually, if the students are thinking to study and specialize in dental surgery degree in University of Adelaide and they did not meet our entry requirement, or maybe they are doing their O-level or SPM, they actually can consider our uh, foundation program in the University of Adelaide College. And um, the foundation will take around 40 weeks to complete. And it... Each week will take consist of 20 hours. So the student will actually study five subjects over two semesters, which is compulsory um, from here, biology, nutrition, physics, chemistry, maths, and general maths. They can choose between um, three. And then for um, the, the student will have two compulsory subjects, which is English and critical thinking. So yeah, there are three main types of assessment for students wanting to enter the um, dental surgery progressions score from um, the, our foundation of 83%. So as long as the student completed the foundation program and score 83%, they meet our minimum requirement. But the student will still go through the um, application process as how I mentioned just now with the other international students. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, um, next on we were moving uh, forward um, regarding accreditation because um, I think international students and also um, parents would like to know that because um, for dentistry and also medicine courses is a professional courses where recognition does matter. So may I know what does this mean to students? Um, Jovain probably can let us know what does accreditation means if let's say students want to become a, a medical doctor. Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, and, and yes, it's a very important one uh, for parents and students to understand. 
So um, simply put, an accreditation is, is important for professional courses that are governed by professional councils. So for example, if your medical degree is not accredited, it means that it is not recognized in a particular country and you will not be able to practice as a doctor. Importantly for students here today, um, it's, it's good for you to know that UWA's medical degree is recognized by the Australian Medical Council, the Singapore Medical Council, and the Malaysia Medical Council. This means that our students from Singapore and Malaysia have the opportunity to practice as a doctor uh, in Australia or in their respective home country if they wish to do so. Yeah, for Stephanie, may I know the Bachelor of Dental Surgery at University of Adelaide, is it recognized in Malaysia and Singapore? Could you share with us a little more about the accreditation? Yes, um, so same for medicine as well, dental surgery program, same with medicines that as long as the program is accredited in the country, so the student were mm -hmm. able to practice in the country. So for the med, uh, dental surgery program for University of Adelaide actually um, is recognized, accredited by the Malaysia Dental Council and also the Singapore Dental Council and definitely is recognized in Australia as well. Yeah, that's great to know. So uh, rest assured, both programs, and uh, medicine and dentistry, are recognized in Malaysia and also Singapore. Um, next would be about housemanship. Yeah, so probably, Jovain, could you share with us what does housemanship mean? I think students um, would like to know what does it, uh, what does a, a student after graduating a medical degree will, um, will be, what's their progress after that? Sure. Um, hmm. Another great question. So, um, housemanship and, and internships are really quite interchangeable terms. Uh, basically, following the completion of a medical course, students who would like to work in Australia can apply for an internship as a pre-registration medical practitioner or house officer. So this internship or housemanship is basically a period of clinical apprenticeship that aims to equip a new medical graduate with the basic uh, skills of clinical practice as a doctor. So in this whole housemanship or, or internship, it, it basically exposes graduates to a range of practice, such as internal medicine and general surgery, etc. Students can choose to return to their home countries uh, in Singapore or Malaysia to do their housemanship if they like to do so. Uh, that being said, we also do have international students doing their internships in Australia as well. Yep. Uh, for Stephanie, may I know um, after completing the bachelor degree, would students have to go through housemanship and also how many years would students have to practice for? Yeah, so for dental surgery, it's a bit different from medicine. So for dental mm -hmm. surgery students, um, once they complete the five-year program, they are actually um, is they are able to practice as a qualified dentist in Australia or Singapore or Malaysia. So we don't, the student don't really need to go for another housemanship year um, in mm -hmm. their country to do the practice. So just after complete the program, they are actually um, fully qualified dentists to start oh. their yeah, yeah. Real. yeah, yeah, that's great to know. Um, probably, I think besides um, getting to know about housemanship and also the practical um, the placement, um, I think students would also like to know what the expected salary for the course uh, after students graduated um, when they are working as a house officer or um, later on. So, Jovain, probably you could share with us what, what is the expected salary for student, for medical doctor? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, so I think the first thing that I'd like to mention is that, of course, we know that, that salary uh, is, is very important, but I, I need to emphasize that um, students wanting to do medicine shouldn't be doing it simply because of, of the money. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it comes with it, but it shouldn't be the reason why you are thinking of pursuing medicine. Um, but just as a general guide, the starting salaries for medical graduates in Western Australia is the highest across the entire nation at 85,000 Australian dollars every year. So as a starting salary, that's really high. Um, and the average top level salary for doctors in Australia is roughly 395,000 Australian dollars every year. So there is a lot of room for growth. Now the exact salary will really depend on your specialization, your level of experience and where you work in. Uh, for example, neurosurgeons and cardiologists typically earn a higher salary than um, doctors who are doing um, general, pra uh, general practice. 
Yeah, for Stephanie, um, could you share with us what is the expected salary for um, a dentist in Australia? So for an entry level dentist with less than one year experience, the student um, can expect to earn around an uh, average total compensation of around 88,000 OC dollar in Australia. So an early career dentist with one to four year uh, years experience, they were able to earn an average total compensation of around 99,000 to 100 and um, 03,000 a year. So a mid-career dentist with five to nine years experience, they will be earning around an average of 105 to 110. But those who have 10 to 20 years and above, they are earning around 150,000 a year um, average. Yeah. Thanks, Stephanie, for sharing. It's great to know that it's a huge sum amount of money, but um, that's that's not the end goal, I would suggest, because I think international students like uh, Malaysian or in Singaporean students would, would be, because um, this course is a professional course, it would be much more into uh, uh, distributing and also um, like um, giving help to the community. That would be the main point instead of focusing on the salary um, of their professions. Um, next, probably, Jervain, you could share with us how does um, UWA uh, program um, prepare medical students for their career? Sure. Um, so the UWA Doctor of Medicine course, firstly, is a very rigorous course in every single aspect. It is challenging but very rewarding, and our medical students gain scientific knowledge, clinical and medical research skills, as well as important values such as being a professional, a leader, advocate, clinician, educator, and scholar. During this session, you would have heard uh, me talk about our facilities, um, mm -hmm. our Emphasis on clinical rotations in hospitals and our reputable academic staff. So really everything is in place for our students to receive a world-class uh, education uh, and be prepared to transition to becoming a practicing doctor. Yep, Stephanie, um, could you share with us how does UWA actually prepare our uh, dentistry students for their career? I think Kylie, you meant uh, UOA, right? So our, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. our faculty <laughs> has a reputation for producing high-skill graduates who are actually well regarded by industry. So our degree are actually designed to provide hands-on experience, which is very important in real world environment. Example, students will practice at computer link treatment station with stimulated patients. So this allowing students to actually develop the skill and also confident to excel in their future career. Yeah, um, that's all for the question that we have prepared today. So maybe we can now look into the question that our audience has. Um, there are a couple of questions that um, actually students do want um, both uh, Javain and also Stephanie to um, answer. Uh, probably the first question would be for Javain. Uh, what is the difference between doing an MBBS and becoming a doctor of, of, be, and the program for doctor of medicine? What is the difference between MBBS and also doctor of medicine course? Very good question and a very common question that, that we get from time to time. So um, the MBBS is basically an undergraduate bachelor degree. Uh, so um, whereas the Doctor of Medicine is a postgraduate qualification. So the uh, Doctor of Medicine is a more rigorous program. It really thoroughly prepares students uh, to become uh, professional uh, medical practitioners. Mm -hmm. and a key difference between both courses is the fact that in MD, uh, students are given the opportunity to do medical research, whereas the MBBS students, uh, they don't uh, typically. So students who do the MD, or certainly from UWA, uh, UWA's MD program, they have the opportunity to do medical research. And this is really beneficial because even before they, they graduate, they are published authors of, of medical journals. And if they would like to pursue a PhD, uh, that is very beneficial and, you know, to look for a job, it's always good to have that, that research background or, or publications that go along with your uh, resume. Yeah. Okay, there's another question for Jervain. Um, over here, they mentioned that there are only seven available scholarships for medicine course and only one person will be awarded for scholarship based on the UWA website. Are there any other external scholarships that can, students can apply? Or are there any internal scholarships such as scholarship by semester for international students? Thanks, Kylie. So I have to clarify that 
Um, there are no scholarships when it comes to the assured pathway to medicine, as well as the graduate entry to medicine. So these are clinical and quota restricted courses. So there are no scholarships uh, that UW provides for these courses. Uh, that being said, some of our students have actually secured scholarships from uh, different government bodies. Mm -hmm. So if you know, uh, you are able to get a scholarship from your government, that, that is 100% fine and you can definitely research more into that area. Yeah, I think this question might have um, asked both university. Um, I think they would like to know how many um, international applicants apply per year generally. So probably Stephanie, you can answer this question. Yeah, sure. So for the dental surgery program, um, it will around 300 students yearly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's for Jerin, um, yeah. Would you know roughly uh, for international applicant, how many per year? It would also be in the hundreds. Um, mm -hmm. so it's a very popular course. It's a very competitive yeah. course. Yeah. Um, but what I would also say is that this is really not a game of chance as well. Um, so it doesn't really matter how many applications are in there. That's not really a good indication of your likelihood of getting a place. Uh, so don't worry too much about external factors in terms of how many applicants there are, focus mm -hmm. on how well you can do and things that are within your control. So things like your ISAT test, things mm -hmm. like academic results, all these are within your control and has the highest impact in terms of your um, chances of getting a place. Yeah. That's great. Um, for Stephanie, I think this question is um, for you. Um, students saying that her or his current university has a partnership with University of Adelaide. What is the difference um, taking the partnership with Universities of Adelaide under the universities or directly applying to University of Adelaide? Okay, thank you, Kylie, and thank you for the questions from this student. I believe the partners that you mentioned is IMU. So mm -hmm. we actually have articulation with IMU and those students who are doing their bachelor dental surgery with IMU, they were able to complete 2.5 years with IMU. Then after that, um, they just need to apply with IMU that they want to transfer to University of Adelaide, and they will choose eight students from the IMU. Um, each year to join our dental surgery program. So it will be total different application process and the application process will be done by IMU instead of the University of Adelaide. Okay, thanks Stephanie. Um, this question would be for Jovain. Um, is the medicine program approved in, in other international countries such as UK or the States or it's only approved in um, Malaysia, Australia or Singapore? Thanks, Kylie. It's a good question. So the UWA uh, MD qualification is recognized in several places. Of course, like you mentioned, Australia, um, Malaysia, Singapore, they're all recognized. Now, in terms of um, accreditation and, and recognition, I think it's really important for students to carefully um, read up on the respective medical council and their rules around it. Um, and just to give you an example, so for example, for students who are wanting to practice in the States, um, they have to um, first apply for certification by the Educational Commission for Foreign Medical Graduates. Now, UW's medical school is specifically uh, on the uh, list of eligible schools, which, which graduates uh, will be considered for um, certification. However, um, it is also important to note that this does not guarantee that you can practice there. You have to read the rules, especially with United States. There are different states involved and different states will have their own rules and regulations uh, that regulate this criteria. So it is always best if let's say you're interested to practice in the US to get in touch with the uh, US Medical Board, for example. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the students would be uh, um, knowing uh, you will have to check the board in the UK or in the States to be able to uh, know the information. Um, the next question would be also for Jovain. Um, the first section, I think Jovain has answered, like how many international students have applied to UWA every year. So Jovain has addressed to that. Um, the next part of the question would be, what is the lowest cutoff rate for ISAT tests? Sure. So in the ISAT, students will be given a percentile 
So at UWA, we will only consider students with 25th percentile or higher. So in other words, if you receive a percentile of 24 or below, we will not consider an application. Mm, thank you, Jervain. Um, next question will be for Stephanie. Um, students would like to know, can they apply for both medicine and dentistry course at University of Adelaide? Um, for students and audience over here today, um, both universities, University of Adelaide and University of Western Australia do have uh, medicine and dentistry course. So if you are aware of that, if let's say you would like to ask this question, um, I think these students would like to, who have already did the research that both schools have dentist, dentistry and also medicine course. That's why uh, this, this question was brought up. So if let's say students would like to apply to both, can they do so, Stephanie? Yes, thank you. It's a very good question. So actually, the student can actually apply for one application for both programs, but um, you just need to submit for once and just sit once exam for the UCAT ANZ aptitude test. But when you receive the interview invitation, you will need to register for two interviews instead of one interview. Yeah. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, the next question would be also for Stephanie. Is it possible to do my undergraduate entirely in University of Adelaide instead of going through the partner uh, via IMU or must they go through IMU partnership to continue at UW, uh, University of Adelaide? Yes, it's possible. So surely I will welcome you to actually just apply directly to University of Adelaide for the dental surgery program. So if you are applying for year 2022, so do not miss out the deadline which is I mentioned just now. Uh, please register the UK ANZ before uh, 17 of May and then with that registration code, you were able to register with University of Adelaide for the dental surgery program. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Would there be any other questions that our audience here today would like um, both Jervain and Stephanie to address too? Um, because on our QOA box, we have actually answered most of the question. Um, if you do have any, um, feel free to just type it in so that we can have Jervain and Stephanie to answer to your questions. If you have any doubts uh, in terms of the application process, the course and all those. Yeah, so over here, we have another question where um, all right, so for, it will be for Stephanie, um, would IMU only, sorry, um, okay, um, so if IMU would be the partner for dentistry course, may I know what is the CGPA requirement for foundation in science? Uh, would you have the information, Stephanie? Okay, uh, maybe I need to have a bit clarify on this. We will only accept the student from IMU as long as they complete 2.5 years with IMU dental surgery program. If the student are doing a foundation of science in science with IMU, then it will be a case by case basis. And um, we have no idea what is the minimum score because normally we would not accept a non-Australia foundation to our uh, medicine program or dental surgery program. Yeah. Yeah, um, probably these students, if you have any question regarding uh, IMU pathway or University of Adelaide pathway, you can contact us. Either of our counselor, counselor will be able to explain you, to you what is the difference between going through IMU pathway and uh, doing direct um, studying five years with University of Adelaide for the dentistry program. Yeah. Um, next would be for Jervain. For the UWA medicine, must ISAT score be at least 25% for every session? Or is, this, or is it just for an overall percentile? Yeah, so um, it is the overall percentile that we are looking at. Um, so that is the important one that students uh, should, should get. Um, but that being said, uh, if a student's percentile in each section is below the 25th percentile in, in one of the section, then uh, it may not be a competitive score uh, to begin with. Okay, thank you so much. So 25% uh, for the audience today, it, it will be the uh, minimum. Um, so below 25% uh, it will not be, um, a UWA will not be able to accept it. Um, so for another, the next question for Stephanie, uh, can students enter medicine or dentistry program with a Singapore Polytechnic Diploma? Yes, the student from Polytechnic Diploma, um, Singapore Polytechnic Diploma, as long as they meet our prerequisite subject um, with a minimum CGPA of 3.0 over 4, they were able to actually apply for our medicine or dentistry program. Yep, 
Thank you, Stephanie. Um, this question will be for Javain. There will be two questions. First question is where um, students have actually done a bachelor with honours in nursing from King's College London. Um, can he or she apply for UWA MD program? Uh, would there be any advantage if, let's say, um, his or her background would be from nursing? Yeah. Thanks, Kylie. Um, so just to go back on the previous question, so I was looking at Q&A box and I read the question. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so just yeah. to clarify, the 25th percentile uh, will, will, um, will apply to each section of the test. So overall, as well as each section of the test, if that was mm -hmm. what you're actually asking. So yep. um, yeah, so just be sure to, to aim for higher than 25th percentile in all sections mm -hmm. and overall as well. Yep. Um, so the next question is around uh, King's College London. Yeah. Mm, nursing program, would they be eligible to apply for UWA MD program with the nursing degree? Yeah, definitely. So, you know, if, if a student studied nursing, they would have, you know, um, some form of bioscience background. So that's always advantages. So uh, if they meet the academic requirement, the GEMSAT and the MCAT, then they would be eligible to apply for it. Um, in terms of the advantage, I would just say that it is more of your background in biomedical science related uh, studies that could be beneficial in the MD. However, I'll also like to emphasize that even if a student were to come without any bioscience background uh, for the graduate entry into medicine, they are still able to enter. Yeah, then the second section for the question, if let's say student doesn't have O level, um, and he or she went through poly foundation program, does it matter if let's say students would like to do um, the uh, apply for the MD program? Yeah, so firstly, polytechnics, and the reason being is that the assured pathway to the doctor of medicine uh, requires students to not have any prior tertiary education. Mm -hmm. That includes all diplomas, it includes degrees as well. So if you were to come from a poly uh, background, I would encourage you to do a bachelor degree at UWA. It could be a bachelor of biomedical science, it could be any other bachelor degree. Um, and depending on what you studied in your diploma and what course you enter at UWA, uh, we can award up to one and a half years of credit exemptions for polytechnic students. So actually, uh, sometimes poly students can go on the graduate pathway or graduate entry at a shorter duration as compared to the assured pathway. So that's very beneficial for poly students. Mm, that's great to know. Um, this question would be also for Jermaine. Um, this student would like to know how many quota for medicine degree will be offered by UWA for international students? Sure. Um, thanks, Alfred. So um, it will be 30 uh, places every year for international students, of which 20 places are for the assured pathway, and 10 places will be for the graduate entry. Yep. Next question is also for Jeray. Um, Would La Trobe University qualification be considered for the MD program and what is the prerequisite GPA to enter? Yeah, um, so if I'm not mistaken, La Trobe runs on a GPA scale of seven, uh, but of course, um, please correct me if I'm mistaken. So as a general guide for Australian universities, we would require uh, an equivalency of 5.5 out of 7 uh, to be eligible to apply to our uh, graduate uh, MD program. Yeah, um, the next question would be for both um, Adelaide and also UWA. Probably I'll start with Stephanie first. Um, student would like to know, can he or she use Duolingo English test uh, to fulfill English requirement? Um, okay, thanks for the questions. Yeah. Um, sorry, no, we are not able to actually take Duolingo English, but um, I'm not so sure if this student from Malaysia or Singapore, but I'll just to let you know, upon the application stage, you can actually submit your O-level result if you have, or you, if you are from Malaysia, if you did um, SPM 1119. As long as you score C and above, you are able to accept that. But during the interview, if the interviewer feels that you don't, you doesn't speak fluent English and you require an English requirement, then they will do it. They will request it as a condition for your application. Yeah. 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 Um, same question. This question for Javain. Uh, could um, Duolingo English um, be accepted to fulfill English requirement? 
Thanks for the question. So I don't believe so. Um, uh, however, similar to Adelaide, um, a lot of times students would have met the English language competency through their previous studies. So for students who are from Singapore, they would have likely met it through their O-levels English, which require a minimum of C6 to meet the English competency requirement. Mm -hmm. um, they went through the A-levels, then their general paper grades would, would meet it as well. Um, and for our students from Malaysia, their SPM 1119 would also uh, satisfy if they have a grade of C and above. Yep. Yeah. So the next question would be for Jervain. I think this student may have came in late. Um, so um, I think he or she may be a little confused on the pathway, uh, the assured pathway. So he or she would like to know, can students apply straight away with um, IGCSE without going through A-levels? Sure. Um, thanks so much for coming in uh, despite the late hour. <laughs> Not a problem that, that you haven't caught the entire presentation. Yep. And again, just before I answer this question, um, I appreciate that everyone here today will come from different backgrounds, different mm -hmm. situations. So I would very much welcome you to make an appointment with us. Um, and so myself or my colleague Isabella will be able to meet with you and talk through the different requirements. So if you have any questions, we can always set up an appointment through AECC, uh, yep. which is our authorized agent, and we can then guide you through the um, entire process altogether. But to answer your question, um, so after you've completed the IGCSE, it is not sufficient to go straight into medicine or the assured pathway at UWA. So basically, you would need to complete a range of qualifications, be it a foundation, A-levels, IB, CBSE, UEC, MAFI, foundation, you know, and so on. And using those results, then you can come into the assured pathway. So at UWA, we offer the UWA um, College Foundation Program. So it's generally between, um, uh, can be as short as eight months, can, can go up to a year or year plus. So depending on what were your results in your IGCSE. Now, let's say after you finish the foundation in a year, you can then use that foundation to apply to UWA's assured pathway. Yep. Um, this next question would be for both universities. Um, I think both universities may or may not heard about pathway honours degree in optometry. Will this be accepted into the undergraduate admission for University of Adelaide first? Um, okay, I would say this will be a case by case basis as long as the um, pathway honour degree in optometry meet our prerequisite subject and the entry requirement, then yes, student will be able to apply. So if the student is really interested, then I will encourage the student to lodge the application. So once it's accepted, then she can proceed with the interview when the others. Yeah. yeah. Uh, same question for Javain. If let's say students completed a um, honours degree in optometry, will it be accepted to apply for a medical degree? So I just wanted to clarify if, yeah. if this is referring to the Parkway College. Correct, yeah. Um, Parkway honours yeah. degree in, yeah. Um, so that again would, would also has, have to be assessed on a case-to-case -case basis. Yeah. Uh, so you can submit an application and we'll be able to advise you after we've assessed this. Yeah. I think probably we will go with the last question. So last question for today, tonight, um, would you WA look at whether a degree is done full-time or part-time? Would this matter uh, in terms of applying for the MD program? Thanks, Kylie. Um, yep. So what we will look at is we will look at your overall degree. Um, so whether or not it is full-time or part-time, we would, we would then see whether have you completed the course and if it meets the uh, requirements. So to my knowledge, uh, we will not exclude part-time degrees. Uh, but then again, it comes with a caveat of saying that mm -hmm. it has to still be assessed on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, I don't think we'll be able to comment that it's a definite yes or definite no. Yep. Yeah, so I think that's all for tonight's question. Thank you, um, the audience, for um, posting your question. So probably uh, we would like to end here with maybe um, starts with Univ uh, University of Adelaide. Stephanie, um, would you have any other things that you would like to share with our audience or is there anything that you want to summarize? Um, thanks, everyone, for attending today's session. I hope the information is assessed. Um, is useful. If you think that you have more questions about the uh, dentistry program from UCF of Adelaide or you plan to actually apply for medis both medicine and dental surgery program with UCF of Adelaide, 
please feel free to actually contact AACC or you can actually arrange a, a meeting with us and then we have a further discussion in detail about the applica uh, application process and also the entry requirement and also um, the degree structure of the program. Thanks, Kylie. Yeah, thanks, Stephanie. How about Jervain? Do you have any other things that you would like to share with our audience today? Or were there any, um, any other things that you would like to summarize about UWA? Sure. So I think firstly, thanks so much for coming by. Um, great choice thinking of, of studying medicine at UWA. It's, it's simply put as one of the most prestigious medical schools, uh, not just in Australia, but also in the world. Um, and so if, if you're thinking of doing medicine at UWA, the most important thing is to take note of the requirements as I've mentioned and ensure that you follow the timeline. We only have one intake every year, so we would hate for you to miss it just because you're not aware of the application window. Um, so if in doubt, please contact AECC um, or UWA directly and we'll be able to guide you on that. Um, for students who need to do national service, I would encourage you to apply after you've completed your high school. We can defer a place for up to two years for national service reasons. Um, and so just as a closing note, um, please feel free to, to make an appointment to meet with UWA uh, through AECC and we'll be able to give you more dedicated and more personalized response uh, today. But we hope that you enjoyed this session and hope that you found it helpful. Yeah. Thank you everyone. Thank you all our audience tonight. Um, thank you for attending the session and also uh, having your time um, spent an hour with us. And also like to thank your brain and also Stephanie for all the um, detailed explanation regarding entry requirement, regarding application process and also answer most of the questions. Um, so we would like to end the uh, webinar tonight over here. Um, so if let's say uh, this session is actually recorded. So if you like to um, look back and also view um, the questions and also would like to clarify in terms of entry requirement that um, Stephanie and Javain has shared their slides. Um, we will upload our recorded session um, for this um, webinar on our YouTube channel. So you can look up our AACC YouTube channel. So we will be sharing it over there. So that's all for tonight. Wish everyone stay safe, healthy throughout this um, tough time and take care and good night. Bye everyone. Take care. Bye.